Yes. Recording is on. Yes, we can see that. Oh, can you see this? Oh, oh yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we, we, we can see that. Uh, Wojovic, just, just a reminder, like, I can't record the things because you are already recording. So either of us can record. So please go ahead and start, uh, continue with the recording. Uh oh, okay. So uh, can you see what's written on the slide? Oh, yeah, yeah, we can see that perfectly. Yeah, and how about this video? Uh, video is uh, good, uh, but yeah, I, I guess you're you're moving somewhere. Oh yeah, I, we can see the video. Yeah, should be fine. Cool. cool. So uh, yeah, folks. Uh, so good evening, and uh, yeah, I think it's online. I don't know from which locations people have started joining. Uh, thank you for having me as a speaker for this uh, session. Uh, welcome to the session on detecting secrets and code committed to GitLab in real time. This is an experiment what we internally did uh, for um, for one month of time. So whatever you would see in the next 40 minutes is uh, what we actually did uh, for one month, the experiments and what we saw, what were the failures, what was the challenges we faced. And about me, I'm uh, Chandrapal Bacha. You can call me Bacha. Uh, I work as a security engineer at D. On my weekends, I read a lot of philosophy, stoicism, Taoism. And on my day-to-day -day basis, I do a lot of pen tests. I do automation both on the offense, uh, the attack side and the defensive side. I read a lot of books both on tech and non-tech uh, because life is not just about tech and security, right? I also manage a, a Twitter handle called Hack with GitHub where I tweet all the open source repositories which I find are pretty useful on GitHub. I just tweet it. So if you want to know, uh, get more updates on that, you could uh, follow this Twitter account. You could also follow me for the uh, quotes I read or uh, the quotes I tweet. You can follow at uh, BN Chandrapal or check out my blog, uh, Bhatshah.io. So before we jump into what was the challenge and what was uh, or how we solved it, let's have some context because context is the key. Uh, I work at a product-based company uh, where there are lots and lots of developers and they tend to uh, fail fast and learn fast. When I say that, I mean that uh, they write code day in and day out. And uh, they also, the company also hires a lot of devs. Uh, asterisk is to say that it was before uh, the COVID situation. Uh, this meant uh, for us, whenever we talk about the code being committed, uh, per week or per day, it is not going to be constant. It's going to be increasing because of the increasing number of developers. We use uh, GitLab uh, Community Edition, which is free for using uh, for all of our uh, code storing and uh, CA CD pipelines. Uh, before this experiment, we did audit our code regularly, say two or three weeks uh, in a regular interval, but that's late. So whenever there's a secret, uh, included within the time frame, then uh, we are at risk. If that repo gets leaked, then uh, the impact would be huge. So the problem statement uh, at hand was clear. We need to somehow detect and remove sensitive API keys or what I call secrets from code. So in this talk, I'll be uh, changing uh, interchangeably saying uh, sensitive API keys and secrets, they're the same. So what would, uh, what would be the advantage of uh, solving this problem statement is this. It would reduce the impact when, say, a developer makes an internal repository public. So the code goes public without uh, anyone's notice. Or a dev pushes commits to their personal GitHub repositories or GitLab repositories by mistake. So instead of just doing a git push to a company repository, if they just do git push to a remote uh, personal GitHub account, then it's a problem. And uh, this would also reduce the impact of uh, unauthorized members accessing code of uh, production critical assets. Uh, just like saying an uh, intern who just uh, joined with the uh, in the company for a very short period of time accessing the production uh, assets, that would be uh, dangerous. So we could, uh, there are few people who argue that uh, we could go ahead with companies out there which say that they detect all the secrets that uh, employees are uh, exposing public, but that uh, is the reactive phase. That is what happens when a secret is made public and then how fast you detect that. 
but product security need to uh, reduce the risk from the scratch at the code level itself so this would also uh, help us in situations like this previously uh, a few weeks back microsoft's github account was hacked and uh, uh, private repositories were stolen the representative did say that uh, all the repositories in the private uh, all the private repositories in the github account was tend to be open source but uh, the representative also said uh, that there might be some uh, api keys or passwords in it so if we have such a solution then we could uh, go ahead and stop this even though the code is leaked that is bad but it is not worse because we still know what's the blast radius or the impact of that leak so let's begin our journey let us understand uh, the workflow of developers because whenever we try to uh, create any tool we should uh, look at the workflow if it is something strange there will be a lot of resistance uh, from adding that tool into their pipeline or their uh, habits so uh, on a daily basis developers write code day in and day out they save that code in their local machines by doing uh, git commit where git is a what, version control software you save that on your local system but then how do you share that code with others that is when they do a git push uh, where the code which was lying on your local machine is now sent to the gitlab server owned by the company so whatever we try to detect that should come within this flow and that would be great then we found uh, something called uh, git hooks so git hooks are simple scripts that uh, ex uh, that git itself the software itself executes before or after uh, events like uh, git commit git push or git receive and there are multiple uh, git hooks out there uh, multiple types of git hooks actually then uh, git hooks are a built in feature of uh, git software itself so you don't need to download the software so it is pretty easy for uh, uh, developers they don't have to download some new software that might crash something else so we are free from that uh if, even though there are so many types of uh, git hooks out there we are interested in these commit and receive based hooks so pre commit is what ha a script which runs before the commit post commit is after the commit then pre receive and post receive so this is how the git hooks would uh, look i'd use the pointer so uh, when the person tries to commit or save the code on his local machine what happens is even before saving this uh, pre-commit hook would be run so only and after that pre-commit says it is successful then the commit is done which is saving of code then after that uh, you have the post commit after the uh, commit is done so that script would run then when the person says uh, get push then uh, there is a hook called a pre-receive which executes and only after this pre-receive hook uh, starts and complete successfully the code would be sent from uh, client to the server and then after the uh, client sends the data completely to the server then we have a uh, hook running called post receive hook then uh, we we're talking about a stoic philosophy where you understand like uh, happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of what is within our control and what is within, uh, out of our control so when we try to control what is not within our control, there might be uh, bad things or a lot of resistance. There uh, could be a lot of frustrations. So let's see what we could control in this uh, workflow and what we cannot. So this is the comparison of Git hooks. So the first uh, two hooks which we were interested in were pre-commit and post-commit hooks. This hooks uh, run completely on the dev machines. So the advantage is this, uh, this stops from the secrets being committed. So we could be 100% sure that no secret is being committed to the code because whenever the person tries to commit and if the tool detects a secret, it will not allow to commit or save that on the local dev machines. So we could be 100% sure that it's not being uh, committed, secrets are not being committed. But when you look at the disadvantages, nothing stops developers to bypass the checks we have in place. 
and also when you look at managing the scripts adding new regex and managing the script on dev machines is pretty hard we have to take uh, into consideration the different types of machines the people are using excuse me then uh, we have uh, if there are any false positives in the detection it becomes a bad user experience uh, just because a person writes the term password in the readme file if we say that okay this is a password and we don't allow to commit that then it becomes a really bad user experience for the developers and if uh, you are working in a company where there are not uh, strict laws on how to use your uh, company laptop then people would have certain kinds of privacy issues also uh, nothing stops them from removing the, uh, removing the git hooks there won't be any detection methods then talking about the pre receive hook actually uh, we found that pre receive hook does not uh, do much checks because uh, the code is still not into the server so all you can see is the branch name the repository to which the user is trying to push and all the stuff but not really the code so there is a concept of a pre push hook also which executes uh, somewhere here just after the post commit but what happens is that uh, that uh, pre push uh, hooks also are on the client side so nothing stops them to bypass that then we are uh, left with uh, something called post receive hook which completely runs on the server side so this is a major advantage because uh, we manage the entire thing we manage the server as a security team so this could be configured for no delay when a user does a git push so whenever a user does a git push the git push is completed only when the post receive hook uh, says uh, it is successfully executed so if there is any delay time uh, say if this take 5 minutes then the git push uh, will say will take 5 minutes to give a successful response then that affects the developer flow as well so what we could do is we could uh, just configure the post re uh, receive uh, hook to just send that the event that okay we got a push from a developer to set some other place and then we could just uh, say that okay this script was successfully executed so this would not uh, affect them anyway so uh, the next advantage is it is pretty easy to manage scripts because uh, everything is on the server side and the false positives are manageable uh, because we are not uh, coupling both the detection of secrets with the git push we are doing it asynchronously but the disadvantages are the secrets are already on the server so anyone who has uh, access to the gitlab box can find the secret uh, or the gitlab repository can find the secret in the repository so we finally decided okay let us go with the use of post receive hooks and uh, this would be the high level flow if you find a secret based on any kind of detection go and automatically raise a confidential gitlab issue in the repository where the secret was found uh, then get try to get the feedback this was important for the longer run uh, because uh, if it's a false positive then we have to tune in our tool so that it does not detect in future so it's a good user experience for them and if it is a, uh, if it's a secret ask the devs to rotate the secret or not just remove it from git because git stores the secret you have to ask them to rotate the secret or revoke it at least then uh, we found out this challenge that uh, all these hooks are configured per repository so if a person uh, tries to create a new repository which we uh, which was not there when this tool was running then we have to somehow write a hacky script that would include this uh, post receive hooks on the uh, repository there is a concept of global uh, post receive hooks as well but that was not very uh, useful it had some challenges but then we found out a gitlab feature uh, called system hooks so in simple terms what a system hook of gitlab does is we give the functionality a http endpoint and when there is any kind of action say like a user pushes to the repository or there is a group creation or there is a repo creation or branch creation whatever it is it posts a http post request to the particular endpoint which we configured so you could uh, there are so many types uh, or functionalities with the system hooks itself you could uh, find that in this particular link and it would uh, look like this 
so you would have something uh, uh, the json data which would be pushed uh, with the help of the uh, system hook would be something like this you have the user who pushed it you have the project id the project name and all the description everything you have the commits which were pushed so you it's pretty easy to just get the commits out of it like what was actually changed so uh, till now we uh, solved the first half of the challenge that is okay uh, get data whenever something is changed on the repository be it uh, a repos uh, repository creation or a git commit push the second half is uh, check for secrets within the code and if there are then create go ahead and create a uh, confidential uh, uh, what issue within the repository when you just go ahead to github and search for the term uh, secrets detection you will find lots and lots of tools so these are some of uh, the tools uh, which uh, we uh, saw so one was uh, truffle hub which was the first tool uh, present uh, for secrets detection then git leaks was released one year after truffle hub was uh, released it was good version it was written in golang then we have git secrets by aws labs uh, detect secrets by yelp uh, talisman by thoughtworks and many more when you check the features you find that truffle hog and git leaks are more flexible whereas the other three the git secrets detect secrets and talisman they are solving a particular uh, problem so that is mostly towards the pre commit hook so you have to configure all these tools on the client uh, machines so this gives us the uh, disadvantage of managing the script and uh, making sure that the developer does not bypass it so we thought okay let us go with the truffle hog and git leaks and uh, evaluate them so the truffle hook tool uh, it's a python based tool uh, it has multiple uh, search patterns multiple uh, configurable regex and then it is pretty easy to install it is just a pip install uh, truffle hog just uh, it's that simple it has lots of cli commands there is very good documentation you could uh, find the tool at this particular link Checking at git leaks, it is uh, written in Golang. It has customizable regexes like uh, truffle hook. You have to mention everything in a custom uh, custom config called config.toml file, and then pass it whenever uh, you run the tool. Then it supports uh, whitelisting of secrets, which is not present in truffle hook, which means like uh, say for example, if you have a secret or a pattern which matches the regexes but it is still not a secret uh, like uh, aws key with example at the end so it is it matches the regex but it's still not a key so you could add that you could whitelist that secret so that that particular secret does not get detected anywhere else then there are lots of uh, cli tools uh, but uh, at that particular uh, time it lacked uh, documentation so every time we wanted to do some uh, tweaks with the tool we had to go check out the code, check out the help options. But uh, recently, a week back, we saw that uh, the, uh, the maintainer made some uh, wiki changes. And uh, GitLex also allows to scan of a single commit, uh, but downloads the entire report uh, repository to just scan a single commit. You could check out this awesome tool in this particular link. Then we had a one on one with a comparison with both the tools. So truffle hog and git leaks. when you check the efficiency or the time taken uh, for a smaller number of commits almost truffle hog and git leaks takes the uh, same time but when you check the overall speed uh, or with the uh, more number of commits you could see that uh, git leaks is comparatively faster when it uh, when you want to scan more number of commits with the same regexes then uh, when you see how uh, how much cpu memory does it take truffle hog is pretty less memory intense uh, but when you see git leaks it is more uh, cpu uh, memory greedy uh, because it is trying to do the task of secret detection of all the regexes in a very uh, short span so uh, it uses a lot of cpu memory then uh, as we thought we configured both the tools with the system hooks of gitlab so whenever there is a uh, push of commits these tools will run in two separate boxes 
So uh, after configuring with GitLab system hooks, uh, this took a comparatively same amount of time, both uh, Truffle Hog and GitLix. But when you look at GitLix, it uh, took um, uh, some more amount of uh, CPU memory. So then finally we said, okay, let us uh, go with Truffle Hog itself. And uh, we, uh, we found there are so many options in Truffle Hog which are not uh, really required. So we stripped all the unnecessary code and we just took what's necessary. So we internally call this uh, stripped version of uh, Truffle Hog as tattletail RT, RT meaning uh, real time detection. So the scan logic, the overall scan logic would look like this get the changes, code changes in the commit, only the added content. So, say for example, if a developer adds a AWS key and then removes the AWS key in the next commit, we don't want to uh, create two issues saying that, okay, you added a AWS key here and you uh, removed a AWS key here. So, we only concentrate on the added content. Then we get all the rejections that we need to scan. Then, for each line in the code change, whatever we saw, we check if the rejects match matches. If it matches, then we create a, a issue, a confidential issue on GitLab on that particular repository. And then we have a separate service called Issue Manager. So what it does is it uh, basically manages, it creates issues, it uh, pings the uh, developer to ask for any updates and all the stuff. So this is the final architecture. So where uh, we have the central uh, GitLab uh, server running, if there is any commits made, then there will be a system hook configured, which sends this to uh, cloud functions, GCP cloud functions. So we don't uh, have to, uh, why use cloud functions? Because we don't have to uh, think about the number of commits which happens in a short uh, duration, even in future. So if there are thousand commits happening in the same uh, span of time, there'll be thousand cloud functions uh, or uh, started, uh, which will be executed in GCP. If these uh, commits do not have any kind of secret or does not match any regex, then uh, it just ends here. But if there is any kind of secret, then uh, this uh, cloud function invokes two other components. One is Elasticsearch, where it uh, stores all the data, uh, all the details of what the secret was on which repository. So this we use to visualize. So uh, if we find a trend that, okay, there are so many uh, AWS secrets being committed, then we have to uh, uh, come up with a process or come up with some kind of uh, remediation so that we could reduce the number of AWS keys committed to the, uh, committed to the code. Then we also send this to uh, a cloud function called issue creator, which manages the issues. We store uh, all the issues and uh, data related to the issues. What's the status of it in uh, MongoDB instance, which is connected to the cloud function. And this cloud function, it just goes ahead and creates the repository, uh, the issue in the repository. So now, uh, let me show you folks the demo. Uh, can you uh, see the video? Hello. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So uh, being a developer, I go ahead and add my billion dollar idea within a Git repository. So I just create a repository, open the readme, and uh, edit the file, and uh, put my million dollar uh, idea there. So that idea is I create a Slack bot, which sends all its subscribed users, cats of cute dogs and pigs, for a monthly subscription of $1. That's a crazy idea, but uh, that would be useful. So I also commit the uh, Slack bot token within the code itself so that I don't forget that in future. So I go ahead, then go ahead and commit that. Now I go ahead to the issue section to uh, give more updates on what I would do in future. But when I refresh the page, I get a new uh, issue saying sensitive data uh, detected. And this gives me the complete details on which commit it was detected, what was the secret, and what was the file. It also assigns me that I have to clean up that because I'm the maintainer of the repository and the person who made the commit. 
So I could click the link and check what was the secret. And someone from security team would follow up with me to make sure that I revoke this uh, particular secret. So jumping back, uh, this tool was possible because of uh, three members hard work. It was not just me, uh, Fari Shihab and Sanjog Panda. Uh, they also helped a lot with this project. You could follow them on Twitter with these uh, handles. Then we deployed this on production repositories, on all the repositories which are getting created. We saw a huge amount of uh, repository creations and commits happening uh, per day. And these are the top five points which we learned. Not all API keys are pretty sensitive. Like say Google API keys, even though they have a regex pattern with which we can detect, Google API keys are everywhere and are intended to be public. Say the Google Maps API key, the Firebase API key. So you have to tweak your tool to uh, make sure that, okay, once this particular secret is whitelisted, you don't report that. Then deployments are different for each project. Uh, there can't be any one good solution that fits all because uh, the secret management for Kubernetes where you have all your Docker containers running might not be the same with what you do with a VM based deployment. So there is no single solution to uh, manage all your secrets in different deployment techniques. And uh, majorly this detection is regex based. So uh, when this particular uh, regex match or uh, when the code matches this particular regex it gets detected so if there are any kinds of api keys or passwords which does not actually match the search pattern of the regex you don't really detect that and if the secrets are in a different language say instead of writing password equals to xyz you write parole which is password in russian equals to xyz then you would not really detect that so this is completely regex based and has its own uh, disadvantages. The next one is uh, these tools also has entropy based detection, meaning that whenever there is uh, huge random sentences uh, in the code, it uh, detects, but this is pretty uh, noisy. So when we enable this for all the repositories, it started uh, giving out saying that, okay, this base 64 uh, encoding of a string is a secret. We have a PNG images as a secret and all those stuff. But it did detect some secrets, but the percentage of secrets with the false positives is very low. It's like very less number of secrets. Then this was one of the most important learnings if, from this experiment learn on what's the secure way to store secrets for each uh, tech stack learn all the uh, different types of development methods and uh, deployment methods and uh, learn what's the secure way if you're trying to build a system a real-time detection system like this because it's uh, it's pretty easy for security folks to say that okay do not store this in code but then uh, the next question for uh, uh, fresher software developers or inexperienced uh, software developers is they would ask how would you actually secure this so when they ask how we might not have the question uh, we, sorry we might not have the answer on how to store that so uh, learn on what's the secure way to store secrets so that is all about this presentation and uh, any questions you could uh, ask That's great. Did your uh, team put uh, an example back on GitHub or somewhere like that for others to look at and learn from? Mm -hmm. So, okay. Okay. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, would you uh, would you mind to stop the recording?